How you all doing? Hope you're all well. Um, this I was intending doing the uh, last couple of Grand Prix prior to Silverstone, just the brief breakdown of them. But it turns out it can't be brief because I need to show you quite a lot that took place. So that video will be to come once I've had a chance to put it all together. But in the meantime, I just want to uh, show you this. Um, there are a limited number of channels um, who are campaigning in a similar manner. Now, many of you will already be subscribed, um, but I'm going to take you through the different channels um, that are campaigning in a similar way to what I myself am doing and um, show you what they're about and ask of you that you can support them. Because as a collective, we need to get the message out, get the truth, the reality of what's really going out on, out to a larger audience. That's the way that you achieve change in life. You know, in order to, for any change to happen in life, a movement has to gain momentum. And you do that by more and more people becoming aware of what is actually wrong and being willing to campaign for change. And the way we do that is have the likes of other people that have got a platform to expose Pete to others what the situation is to enable others to understand. Now, um, I've been sent this video today. Um, thankfully, I've got a lot of people who um, send me things. Um, they've reached out to me and we're in contact by, over various um, forms of social media. And, um, you know, it enables me to see certain things that are going on and, and enables me to enhance my perspective. So one of the videos sent to me today, I'm going to go through with you now. Um, so this is a, a YouTuber called The Daily Cynic. They have only got uh, 346 subscribers. So this is their video. Um, I'm not going to rip it apart. It's a good video and I'm going to just go through it because there's a few points on of theirs I would like to expand upon. So, has Formula One turned into a farce? Okay, this is the video I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through that now. So, please go and show your support for the Daily Cynic. Well, watch this, and hopefully that will be enough to persuade you to do so. Here we go. Hello again, true F1 fans. The Daily Cynic is back with another must-see video. Today, I'm going to talk about how our beloved sport of Formula One is becoming a farce in front of our very eyes. But so, that's something we all know. The, the whole shit show is a farce. Before I do that, it'll be much appreciated if you could help support this channel by hitting the like and subscribe buttons below. All done? Thanks. Now let's get started. I've been unsure whether to do a video about this issue for some time now, mainly because it's like trying to beat a dead horse with a stick. At some point, it's not worth the effort, but that's probably... And a lot of people feel that way. You feel powerless to impact things and you just know it's a shit show. What they want isn't it? For the good guys to shut up and be quiet and everyone just sit back and participate in a sham. Whether you It is what they want. They've got their bought media just uh, parroting the narrative that they want to give out. And anybody that's exposing the truth is just a tiny voice that doesn't get heard. A tiny voice going against the flow of this Formula One machine that is managing to condition people with their bullshit narrative. You're an active participant or you're just a viewer like most F1 fans. So I'm not going to shut up and be quiet and- And let's be clear about what you just said there. Whether you're an active participant, think of how many people are employed in the sport of Formula One. Think of how many journalists report on the sport of Formula One. Where have you had anybody ever come out and say, this is wrong. This is all bullshit. They're all going along with the same bullshit narrative. And they're doing so because it pays for them. If you work in an industry where, you know, you're getting a decent enough salary, it's affording your way of life, you're content with that. You're not going to call it out for being wrong, even though you know it's wrong. That This is what these people are. You know, they're going along with it because... It's working for them. Allow this corruption to continue without calling it out. Now, some of you may be thinking, what could I possibly be referring to? 
Well, if it wasn't enough that the FIA turned the title deciding Abu Dhabi race in 2021 into an absolute shambles to benefit Red Bull, or that the FIA official who investigated the Abu Dhabi mess became CEO of Alpha Tauri one and a half years later, now... Yeah. <laughs> Where are the links? Conflicts of interests, okay? So this is what this video goes on to explore. The guy that is put in charge of investigating it Oh, everybody, we, the FIA, we're going to do a full investigation into Abu Dhabi and we're going to explain to you all that happened and therefore make sure you're all aware that it's never going to happen again. Bullshit, isn't it? It's absolute, It's a veneer. It's a bullshit facade, right? Claiming, oh, yeah, we, we've done all the thorough, proper job of doing an investigation. We've investigated ourselves and we found ourselves to be OK. Utter bullshit. Now I found out that my worst fears about F1 has just become reality. Yesterday, the FIA announced that Alpha Tauri will be partnering with them as their official clothing partner from 2024 until 20. Look at them. We're having a lovely time. We're wearing our FIA branded fucking tops and we're having a little saunter around a racetrack living the fucking dream. Okay? Corrupt fuckers. But they're living a life where they're comfortable. They're quite happy living that life, living that lifestyle and quite happy to be involved in that corrupt regime because it's working for them. That's the level of their integrity. 26. The deal will see FIA officials wear Alpha Tauri branded clothing for the next three seasons in FIA governed motorsports around the world. So, what we know is you've got Red Bull and you've got the B team, Alpha Tauri, or whatever the shit they want to call themselves this year. And they're the suppliers of the sports governing body. And a month, two months ago, the sports governing body or there was a rumor that the wife of the mercedes boss toto wolf had a conflict of interest for being the head of the women's series ran by the fia so that's the conflict of interest but this isn't unbelievable this includes formula one you really can't make this up red bull and the fia aren't even trying to hide it anymore Red Bull may as well brand the skin of every FIA official involved in F1 with a hot iron to show they are Red Bull's property now. This also shows how much the FIA really cares about conflict of interest. Is there anyone with any ethics left in that organization? It really doesn't surprise me. No, nope, is the answer to your question. <laughs> Absolutely not. None of the fuckers. That it's come to this. This is what usually happens when corruption isn't dealt with. It just gets worse. Okay. This is exactly the point. This is the point that led me to begin campaigning in the first place. So if you remember, immediately after Abu Dhabi, there was all the speculation about what was going to happen. And we were told that the FIA was going to do this full report into it. And they were going to let us know they're going to do a root and branch report and make sure this could never happen again. And what then emerged was, oh, Lewis Hamilton has moved on. And we'll get into that at some point. But then when I, I, at the time I wasn't on YouTube, at the time I was trying to campaign using Facebook. That was the only form of social media I was able to, to use or comfortable with. And I joined lots of Lewis Hamilton groups. And there are many of them out there, many with, you know, 40, 50,000 members. And um, I would write articles exposing what I know. Um, and that's evolved over the last couple of years. Um, and the number of responses you would get where people would say, oh, um, Lewis has moved on. So I think we need to move on as well um, and, and enjoy the new season, because I'm sure Lewis will be um, be raring to go in 2022 and he'll win his eighth in 2022 anyway. And even back then, I was thinking, look, you brain dead fuckers, right? You can wave your flag. You can go, yay, I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan. It's irrelevant. If you are up against a corrupt regime, you will never get a fair chance. Because if the regime is corrupt, they will continue 
perpetrating their corruption until they are held to account and until there is a consequence. That is the way things work. And people think, oh, um, it was just a one off. It was just a mistake. But it's all going to be fine and it's all going to be back to being good again. No, this this whole thing is rotten to the core. And if people don't understand that, then you've got your head in the clouds. The FIA is rotten to the core. It is not fit for purpose and it needs eradicating. You don't go to the FIA to ask them. Uh, we think that you've made a mistake and you've judged yourself wrongly. Will you look at the decision that you made about 2021 and change that? They'll just go, uh, no, thanks. We're happy with it. We're our own governing body. We make our own rules. We're only accountable to ourselves. Right. No, that's not the way it works. There are criminal rules, laws that you have to obey the laws of society in the countries that you operate in. You've breached them. None of them countries are holding you to account. There's a problem there. Why is that? Money. When money is involved, justice seems to go out the window. Seems you can afford your own form of justice. And these are things that should set the alarm bells ringing in your head. But too many people don't even realise it. But we'll get into that in a future video because I don't want this one to go on too long. Anyway, until this regime is eradicated, you will not see fair racing in Formula One. You didn't see it in 2021. You didn't see it in 2022. You didn't see it in 2023. You're watching a corrupt company. Well, a collusion of corrupt companies. Red Bull are clearly being advantaged, allowed to get away with with using machinery that was developed not in accordance with the rules of the sport. And they're allowed to continue winning with that. And their drivers are allowed to drive in a manner which other drivers would get punished for. But Red Bull, everything's fine for Red Bull. Now, if that's not ringing the alarm bells, and you don't realise that every other driver in the sport, whoever you support, is up against that. That's not OK. Now, the strap-on fanboys, they love that. That works for them. They're happy. Their, their desires are being met. So they will continue arguing. They'll be sat down there in their bedrooms right now, bashing away on their keyboards, writing, writing the comments, telling us what they think. Right. Strap-on fanboys. When I recommend these channels, you leave them alone. You stick with me. OK, we'll keep all you pricks in the same place. You stick with me. OK, I'll deal with you. You, you keep coming here and I'll keep making your video videos for you to to respond to. You can subscribe to me, a channel that you don't like, um, but feel compelled to keep hitting the thumbs down button on every video and tell us what you think in the comments section. We all know exactly what you are. OK, we all know the type of individuals you are and how you've been incited. OK, you are turds of human beings. Simple as that. And if you don't like being called that, there's a simple answer, isn't there? Don't be a turd of a human being. Quite simple. But that's who you are. Anyway, on with this video. Worse, with the perpetrators getting emboldened to do more and more shady things. We see this in politics, business, and even law enforcement. The corruption just continues if it's not rooted out. The and this is the bigger picture. It's not just about sport. It's about your lives. When this is accepted without any consequence being enforced, it carries on in other aspects of life. People's standards, their expectations, what they're what they see as being, oh, it's normal. Oh, we, oh, yeah, it's just more corruption. Oh, we're powerless to do anything about it. Who does that benefit? That benefits the corrupt. We're supposed to have laws that hold people accountable for their actions. And as soon as you don't apply them, as soon as you start letting people get away with things, you get a decline in the things that have been fought for over the course of time and you're going to get ruled by tyranny that is what's going to happen and that is what is happening 
And what is happening is you're being conditioned by the media to believe, oh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's all, all OK, everybody. Don't worry about it. It's all OK. Move on. And who does that benefit? Well, that benefits those that are corrupt. FIA race stewards, officials and scrutineers may as well wear Red Bull racing outfits during F1 events from now on. Would anyone have any objections to this? And if so, why not in the case of Alpha Towery branded clothing? They're both owned by the same company, so I would find it weird for someone to object about FIA officials in Red Bull outfits but not in Alpha Towery branded clothes. Maybe it's because Red Bull colors would make the collusion too in your face for any reasonable human being to deny. What's worse, though, is that you won't read about any of this in the written media as most of these guys are self-censuring to maintain their FIA-approved paddock passes to F1 events. So there you go. None of the media are calling this out. And it's because they want their little FIA-approved media pass. They, too, are living this life. They, too, are getting to jet off around the world to each of these Grand Prix. Fully paid for. Okay? You go away for the three or four days, whatever it might be, to whichever location. Get to write a few things about what's happened, okay? And as long as you just parrot the narrative, you're all part of the club. You get to be invited onto that yacht party when we get round to Monaco with the free drinks and the fancy food. And we're all friends, aren't we? We're all having a lovely time as long as you say the right thing and don't reveal the reality of the corruption that's going on. This is, this, you know, this is why I get angry with the likes of the BBC's Andrew Benson. All on the gravy train of F1 and not calling out the truth. It's corruption. Also, a lot of these so-called journalists are hitching rides to and from race events on a certain team's private jet, which is why, instead of investigating and trying to dig a little deeper into the strange events of the 2021 season, they were all comfortable with spreading the narrative of human error. However, and this is the thing. When you, when you know what you know about the sport, when you see what you can see about the sport and you look around and nobody's saying it that way, that is when you think, well, what's going on here then? Why is nobody in the world's media explaining the simple reality of what is going on? Because within a couple of days of Abu Dhabi, I knew it was wrong immediately. But within a couple of days, I was able to say, OK. How can I articulate this in a way which would blow every argument out of the water? And the simple sentence is this. You, in, in a Grand Prix race, you cannot separate out just two competitors to race off for a win. OK, which is what actually took place. That wins any court case. Simple. And yet no media could tell you that. That's a bit strange, isn't it? It's a bit strange. I blame the fact that F1 has now become a farce on all those F1 fans who, in their delight at seeing Hamilton deprived of an 8th World Drivers' Championship, were willing to look the other way at the corruption and collusion between the FIA and Red Bull. This reminds me of the rigged boxing matches of the Jim Crow era in the Deep South, where the public would see their favorite fighter get beaten for 12 rounds straight, only to have his hands raised at the end of the fight simply because the opponent was a black man. And what did those fans do back then? Did they shout robbery? No. They went home content with the fact that no black man would ever be given a decision over a white man as long as they were around. And so the farcical boxing decisions continued and became even more prevalent. It's amazing how far we've come since those horrible times, yet some things haven't changed much. Some fans are willing to look the other way at the corruption and collusion in F1, even when it's flaunted in their faces. If we want to stop our beloved sport from becoming a total farce, then it's up to us true F1 fans to do something about it. You can't rely on the written media or your favorite content creators because they all would like to continue enjoying the perks of being invited to race events by certain teams. So there you go. These big YouTube channels. You, you heard the same narrative parroted by them. None of them have explained the true reality of what's taken place. They've just gone along with it. Because if they're big enough and they can influence enough minds, then the sport of Formula One reaches out to them and gives them the perks. And if you get so big, in the case of Wonderful, and you're calling it out, all of a sudden, your channel seems to grind to a halt. 
you know, 10,000, it's been stuck on 10, 10 and a half thousand subscribers for over a year now. And he's a far better content creator than the likes of Cameron F1, who's dog shit and various other ones. You know, that you see channels with 40, 50, 150,000 subscribers. Wonderful's better than Peter Windsor. Peter Windsor's a fake, just a facade, okay? But presents himself as having knowledge and integrity, and he, he's just full of shit, okay? But somebody who's real like Wonderful, his channel goes, it grinds to a halt. Unless you parrot the narrative. They won't do anything to rock the boat. Anyway, that's all folks. Thanks for watching and remember to help support this channel by hitting the like and subscribe buttons below. Till next time. Okay, so if you look at uh, that channel, so I'll go back there. The Daily Cynic. So have a look at that channel, please. If you liked what you just uh, heard from there, please support that channel by subscribing to it. FF1, uh, it's gone backwards with the subscribers, 966, he was up to 975. FF1, um, along with Boy10 Dio and Lex F1, uh, they're some of the guys that have helped my channel grow along the way. And FF1 will be a Marmite character for, for some of you. Some of you will love him, some of you will hate him. I love him, I think he's brilliant. Um, and it will play with your minds, but that's the key. You need to get thinking. So if you're not already subscribed to FF1, please get yourself across to FF1 and show him support. Um, subscribe to FF1. Boy Tendio, now 256 subscribers for Boy Tendio, which is lunacy, really. Um, I think every one of us YouTubers that are kind of campaigning in this way. Um, just love this guy. We all wish we had the same level of talent that he's got. And there's a few of his videos which um, you can just sit down to and listen to time and time again because, yeah, they're just superb. Um, so again, I'll give you an example of that in uh, other videos, but please show your support for Boy Tendio if you don't already. This is one. And I'll uh, show you some of their videos at some point. N, S and C. Now, I've only, well, fairly recently discovered their channel. I've actually discovered their channel a while back, but it's discovering their back catalogue of videos that I didn't realise they'd done. So at the time where, in that first year of campaigning for me, when I was doing all my campaigning on Facebook, they were doing this on YouTube, but I didn't realise that they were. And I look back at some of the, the videos they're producing back then and they're saying exactly the same things that I was writing about and I wish I'd have discovered them back then because I'd have tried to li link up with them and, and try to get what I was I'm producing out through then um, but this is the way it is but I'll go through some of NS and C's uh, videos and show you exactly what it is they've been saying they're exactly right the videos that they produce stand the test of time okay and they always will so th that's another channel. Again, they've only got 627 subscribers. It seems as if you're telling the truth, then somehow your audience gets suppressed. Lex F1. Now Lex has only got 430 subscribers. Another guy who keeps it real. Another guy that's very supportive. Now you look here on this channel, sorry, this video here, the truth about Abu Dhabi part two. And he is doing the same thing in terms of saying, look, this this is the group of YouTubers who are speaking about this with reality. OK, so look, please show Lex your support. If you're not already subscribed, go and check out his content. OK, and subscribe to his channel. Help it grow because we need to ensure that more and more people start seeing what is really going on. OK. You have to wake people up. Otherwise, all that's going to happen is this shit show keeps rolling on. The corruption keeps taking place. And before you know it, two years time, the same shit's just happened. Lewis Hamilton decides enough's enough. Call it a day. 
what's the point in carrying on? So those of you that are Lewis Hamilton fans specifically, that's how the remainder of his career is going to be blighted. OK, but what is going on in Formula One, the corruption, the whole mechanics of it are things that will impact your lives in other ways. Governmental decisions that aren't made for the benefit of the population, that are corrupt, that are that are things such as insider trading, things that are rules against, that are making certain individuals billions and that are costing you your living standards. And they'll say to you through their media, oh, it's yeah, it's just this con con this co current um conflict or it's this current crisis and we're all in it together and we're all going to have to shoulder the burden of this and it's you know we're just going to have to work through this all together and we're all in it yeah and and we're all the ones that are dealing with the shit right having the struggles in our lives and there's people on their yachts in the monaco harbour the billionaires that are loving it they're not shouldering any burden they're not shouldering any burden whatsoever. They're the ones that are benefiting. They're the ones that are controlling the decisions of the governing body. They're the ones that are using the media to condition you to believe things are a certain way. And they're the ones that are living it up. And you're the ones that are the, impact, the, the victims that are impacted by it. And finally, most of you will already be subscribed to Wonderful, okay? Um, he's the biggest channel out of all of us that's ever campaigned in the manner that he has, calling out the corruption in the sport of Formula One. So if you're not already subscribed to Wonderful, please get yourself over there and do so. So just to recap, The Daily Cynic, FF1, Boytendio, NS and C, Lex F1, wonderful now if the, i discover any more channels that i've missed out i will be uh trying to signal boost those channels as and when i can i'll try and do some videos along the way just to uh, showcase what those guys do um might be girls some of them i don't know um but um yeah please show your support and as i say collectively hopefully we can take what is really going on to a larger audience and begin making a difference. Thanks for your time on this one. Please hit the like and subscribe on my channel because I, the videos I've got coming, which are the, the build up to Silverstone via the two Austrian Grand Prix, you're going to want to see them. Trust me, you're going to want to see what took place in Austria 2021. See you all soon.